Ukraine upgrades outdated S-200 air defense system shoots down Russian strategic aircraft. To take down a Tu-22 and two A-50s, Ukraine likely used 1960s Soviet-era S-200 air defense missile systems designed to shoot down high-altitude strategic bombers and spy planes. The Kyiv Post media outlet reported this. It is noted that in the last four months, Ukraine has made significant progress in countering the Kremlin's strategic aviation. Unlike previous incidents in which Russian bombers were only damaged or destroyed while on their base airfields, the Ukrainian air defense forces have showcased a new level of expertise by successfully shooting down enemy strategic aircraft directly in the air. In January 2024, the air defense forces of Ukraine destroyed a Russian A-50U long-range radar detection aircraft and seriously damaged an IL-22M. The IL-22M is believed to have served as a repeater by the Russians. Unfortunately, the enemy managed to land the plane, which had suffered significant damage to the tail section of the fuselage. On the evening of February the 23rd, another Russian A-50 aircraft was shot down during a combat mission over the Sea of Azov. On the morning of April the 19th, 2024, the Russian Tu-22 M3 supersonic strategic bomber carrying KH-22 and KH-32 missiles became the prey of the Ukrainian Air Force and the HUR. Ukraine claims that in all these instances, the dated Soviet S-200 anti-aircraft unit was used. The S-200 is a long-range anti-aircraft missile system developed in the USSR in the 1960s, which could hit air targets at up to 160 kilometers in its early versions. During its time, the S-200 system underwent four modernizations, the most famous of which were the S-200V Vega, the S-200M Vega M and the basic version of the S-200 Angara. With each modification, missile and guidance were improved, increasing the accuracy of the system. The technical specifications of the upgraded S-200 missile are currently not disclosed. It is presumed that to increase the flight range, the missile's warhead was downsized to accommodate additional rocket fuel. Another possibility is that Ukraine has modernized the guidance system, eliminating the need for target illumination or manual control from the ground. During the final stage of flight, the missile could capture the target in a fully autonomous automatic mode. It's also possible that other countries have contributed to the modernization process by providing modern electronic components for the missile. NATO can set up a 100 billion euro financial support package for Ukraine, President Volodymyr Zelensky announced on Monday during a joint press conference with NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg in Kiev. Today we discussed Jens's initiative to create a special fund to financially support Ukraine's defenses in the amount of 100 billion euros for a period of five years, Ukrainian media quoted Zelensky as saying during Stoltenberg's unannounced visit to his country. It is important that this is not at the expense of bilateral volumes, earmarked in our agreements on security guarantees, Zelensky emphasized. In turn, NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said that the alliance would increase the flow of arms and ammunition to Ukraine amid the war with Russia. Stoltenberg is also expected to address the Ukrainian parliament, RADA. During a joint press conference, Stoltenberg praised Zelensky's leadership and the bravery of Ukrainian forces and civilians and invited the Ukrainian president to attend the NATO summit in Washington in July. It's important to visit Kiev again and meet with President Zelensky. The situation is difficult, but it is not too late for Ukraine to prevail, and more support is on the way, Stoltenberg wrote in his ex-post ahead of his surprise visit to Ukraine. In early April, Stoltenberg proposed a 100 billion euro five-year package of military aid to Ukraine that would give the Western alliance a more direct role in providing support to Kiev. NATO declined to comment on Stoltenberg's proposals but an official from the alliance said foreign ministers would discuss the best way to organize NATO's support for Ukraine, to make it more powerful, predictable and enduring. It should be noted that today's visit was Stoltenberg's third trip to Kiev since Russia's full-scale invasion of the country, 
with previous visits on April 20th and September 28th last year. Russian troops launched a missile attack on the city of Odessa on April 29th, Ukrainian media reported. According to preliminary reports, the attack was carried out by the Iskander M missile cassette warhead. The strike targeted the students' palace of the National University Odessa Law Academy. The palace is known as Harry Potter's Castle. Residential houses and infrastructure have also been damaged, and the city is in ruins. At least four people were killed and 28 people were injured during the incident. A minor is among the injured. Fire broke out in the palace following the strike. The military equipment cannot get closer than 600 meters. Former MP Kivilov, who once received an award from Putin, was among the injured during the incident. <laughs>